now then to Thrive's patron and also the president here of the Royal College of Physicians, Sir Richard Thompson. Thanks very much, uh, Kevin. I'm Richard Thompson here uh, at the college, and it's a great pleasure to, to welcome you all here in the last building that Dennis Lasson, who built the college, he built this extension of the council room, which I think is a lovely room, and a lecture theatre down below, where I've just been opening uh, another conference. And it's a particular pleasure, therefore, that you come here and have your uh, conference here. Uh, as you know, I've been very keen, as Cathy's uh, hinted in the research, so that I've been with Thrive since 2001, and I think to convince certainly the medical community and everyone else, it's very important to have hard evidence that the things that we're talking about work, and I do believe they do work. Uh, St Bernard, of course, was, was very keen, uh, uh, as you know, and I remember my father, we used to live in the water, and he said when I was a medical student, the people who were in the large mental health sanatorium there at Virginia Water, they should get out in deep, deep fields, and as a young medical student, I wasn't a bit dick, silly old fool. Uh, reminds me of Mark Twain thinking that his father learnt an awful lot between the age of when he was 14 and 21. But he was right, of course. There, there's clear evidence that uh, physical exercise uh, and getting out do uh, improve people. So I'm an enormous supporter of Thrive, and it does seem, as Cathy has implied, that the way we're riding on a wave that we're gradually convincing people. Uh, I was always impressed when I read the literature. Uh, so much work is done elsewhere across Europe. There are all these green care farms, which you don't seem to have in this country. A lot of the, the basic research behind the advantages uh, of uh, gardening, in its widest sense, uh, has come from America, starting with Roger Ulrich, showing that even looking, looking at green spaces uh, is important both for uh, hospital patients, they do better after surgery, and it's a cystectomy, it's that it's all blood operation, the better they could see out of windows and look at green things. And even a study, as you probably know, in prison, that the prisoners who looked at green space through their, their windows, opposed to those cells looking on the prison yard, actually went less to the healthcare services of that prison. So it's these sort of re re counterintuitive results that are very important to study scientifically. So we've really got to look at the evidence. And there's even evidence that if you look at a variety of plants, rather than just one or two, you can improve uh, the benefits. As you know, MIND is a great supporter of some of the things that we're very keen on. There's clear evidence it does improve a whole lot of mental health problems, from combat <coughs> stress to anxiety to depression, etc. And as we're going to hear from dementia, I'm actually delighted to hear that it's been successful. I always thought it would help. Uh, a uh, a uh, poll by Maury uh, showed that 94% of the population prefer, prefer these sort of complementary alternative uh, treatments, which, which I lump uh, social and therapeutic gardening into, uh, they prefer those to drugs for mental health problems. And I think we'd all agree with that. And indeed, as you probably know, recent years a lot of criticism has been produced uh, against uh, psychiatric drugs because they're not always that effective, and we well know they have a lot of side effects. So if we can provide an alternative, in this case a very really cheap and safe alternative, surely we should uh, support it. Well, the other point I want to make is a tremendous emphasis now on exercise. Much to my surprise, the evidence shows that exercise is more important than being overweight. You see what I mean? That I, if you exercise and you're overweight, you can counteract the deleterious effects of being overweight on everything from diabetes to cancer. Uh, so we now are beginning to think that, that physical exercise is extremely important. And as you know, I know as a gardener, that it is quite considerable exercise. I remember some years ago, Thrive produced the figures, the amount of calories used when you're raking and digging. Uh, there is, in fact, a gym outside your window, which, of course, is relatively cheap. Uh, and so the exercise you can take in gardening is extremely important, and I think we should see that as a real benefit, both to physical uh, and to, to mental health. But we mustn't forget that it increases social inequality, because usually people in social class form five don't easily have access to gardens. There are, of course, allotments, all those sort of things. But on the whole, like gyms and everything else, we're talking about people, better off people in society who have easy access to gardens. Uh, Thrive did a survey a few years ago looking at people with disability, and the majority of them actually wanted access to gardens and had access to gardens, but nevertheless, there's a large minority who find that difficult, uh, and I think it's something, again, that we should try and uh, encourage uh, in the community. And Thrive has you know, done a tremendous amount of at uh, Reading and, and now in Battersea. So there is a gym outside your window. Get out there uh, and use it, not just to escape from the, your wife harassing you, but also to get the uh, physical and mental benefits. 
I've mentioned those and of course the advantage of people who are isolated in life to get out and it's coming to the, the, uh, the Reading, uh, the uh, Thrive main centre near Reading. It's quite clear that people got out from an isolated life, living in a single room, they get out to meet people. Uh, that was very important, particularly if they had learning difficulties, they were integrated more meeting people. There, there was evidence from the studies we did showing that numeracy and literacy could be learned uh, in the uh, courses that they, they did. You, of course, can produce better food, and if you've got your own allotment, etc., produce more high-quality food, which must be important. If you get out in the air, you get more vitamin D from sunlight, and vitamin D is not just bones, we now know. Vitamin D is very important in cardiovascular disease, probably mental disease. And I have a pet theory that I worked for a while at Feltham Young Offenders Institute. On, I may say worked there rather than uh, was an inmate. Uh, and looking at the prisoners, they never got any sunlight at all. They went into their exercise yard, went to smoke, but it was outside of, of the sunlight. So unless they were doing gardening around the uh, prison, they had no exposure to sunlight at all. As you know, normal people, vitamin D levels, fought for during the winter, so I can't imagine what their vitamin D levels uh, are, but I'm told studies are being done, because I have this uh, image that vitamin, if you fed vitamin D supplements to prisoners, they'd suddenly all become Christians and change their, their life and uh, become good. But anyway, the evidence will be coming. And finally, we mustn't forget employment. We, we always hoped in Thrive, many of the people on the programme would move into an employment. In the gardening field, there are opportunities, horticulture and agriculture. So we did hope, and, and we certainly encourage people to take NVQs and so on. It is, I think I would say, a form of rehabilitation, which has never been well supported in medicine. Uh, it, it used to be part of rheumatology, and rheumatologists became much more specialised, and they're actually holding a conference downstairs from where I've just come. But rehabilitation has been, been rather neglected, uh, and I think this is part of rehabilitation that we should support. Now, I remember, Cathy, that you, you did some uh, work with visually disabled people. Uh, there was a Blind Garden of the Year competition. I remember going to the results. I was stunned to see these pictures of gardens, beautifully neat and far, far better than mine, by people who were totally blind, uh, apart from just being visually disabled. <coughs> and also, we had Come Gardening magazine, and I hope that's still, still going. It's very important. So here's a particular group of disadvantaged people in our society who can be helped by horticulture. I'm greatly looking forward to Joe's uh, uh, two lectures about to give us. He has patiently worked with Thrive, struggling uphill to, to get funds and to do research and to show that social horticulture really is a worthwhile thing. And so uh, all thanks to him and it's delightful to see him, even though his hair, I notice, has turned slightly more white, uh, but maybe that's because he went out in the sun or, 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 or what. Uh, so, uh, at this program, I'm told it's also to welcome Graham for Life and Insight, which uh, I'd like to do myself personally. I think it is uh, very good, and you're going to, the insight is going to be a, a measurement outcome to what is so good. We can show that things have changed positively, or indeed negatively. Maybe we should always have the null hypothesis that what we're doing is not good, but show that it is good and then uh, push it. We certainly need more evidence, and I would strongly support that. Last year I went up to Sandwell to see the programme there with John Middleton's public health doctor, uh, which agriculture in the community, and again a very deprived community. So that was very positive as well. And finally I'd like to thank Sustain, who I know are supporting this conference today, uh, and I do hope all goes well. It's very important, and I hope we'll be writing up the results that we can use. So thank you very much, Kathy, for asking me. Mm -hmm.